Well, I think we have been using our ice arena, and uh, which was sort of quite tired and old and with fairly poor acoustics, and also City Hall that is a very good classical music venue. But again, the acoustics probably lack uh, the modern context. And we really felt that we were missing out and that bands were bypassing us and going for places like Brid Brid Spa and Bridlington. And um, there was a real opportunity being missed for Hull to have a state of the art music performance venue and this is it and this was obviously it and in a sense that that was the uh, decision making really that we needed to in a sense be part of the Premier League of venues and uh, this fantastic facility gives us that opportunity. Well obviously the council because the council funding building had to obviously commit the finance so we had to go through the uh, bureaucratic process of allocating the capital sums and then it was obviously about where where the site and location should be and this was a fairly tired and unloved part of town but also very close to uh, the jewel in our crown which is sort of holes waterways and marina so it seemed an ideal op opportunity to tidy up a sort of uh, unloved part of town and obviously bring a, a fantastic asset to a part of the town where visitors want to be I think people are always fearful of change and I think but what you have to do is convince them that the change is a price worth paying and I think people realise they could see the bigger picture, they could see the, the vision at the end of it. I think we had a few debates about would, would the venue be big enough, should it be a lot bigger? But actually I think it's pitched at about right because obviously if, uh, if bands sell out straight away you could put extra nights on here and it makes for a far more intimate experience. It was amazing. I, my first visit here was a um, completely blank site, so it was after the demolition of the, uh, of the previous building, so the site preparation. And then uh, I, I remember seeing the lift shafts going up and being completed, and then the steelwork and every phase from there. So it was really exciting. Every time I, I came onto site, I, I noticed exactly what had changed from the last time. And um, we took pictures, we documented um, those changes. So to see it from nothing, all the way through that whole process was was amazing. So much fun. Being from Hull as well, I used to drive past it every single day. So the first time coming in and just seeing stuff and getting to take pictures of like a door handle being put on the door was so exciting. And then, yeah, everybody in the city wanted to know what was happening and I was getting a bit of an insight and getting to reveal that. Um, well, I'd driven past it every day through the whole building process. So I'd sort of watched it being built and then to come in for the first time it wasn't actually quite finished when we first came so to see it from the outside then to come in when it wasn't quite finished to seeing it sort of actually finished on our on our event night was just like it was great you know well Ellie and Laura make everybody take selfies and um, so it was an idea to go into the toilets and take the first selfie and I kind of got dragged into it it was kind of cool because now when you go on Instagram or Facebook, there's tons and tons of selfies and us three managed to get the first one. So that was really cool. Okay, so what we decided to do when we were testing things in the building was to try and capture people's imagination by doing a few different things that were slightly off the wall. So we came up with this, what at the time seemed like a great idea, which was to simultaneously flush all of the toilets. So there are about 150 different toilets um, and we thought we could get a little PR stunt going by inviting members of the public to come in and then simultaneously flush them. Um, so we put it out there that people could get a guided tour if they came and flushed the loos and um, lo and behold 900 people offered to come and do it on a Thursday afternoon um, which was obviously way more than we needed. Um, so the event was a massive success, we got the media in, it got national newspaper attention, um, regional radio coverage and local newspapers and 150 willing volunteers who we picked came along and they all stood um, in one of the cubicles um, throughout the building um, and then we over the tannoy got them to flush we did it three different times um, and then everything worked um, there were no issues which was great um, and yeah it was just one of those really daft ideas that we thought at the time might capture people's attention and just try and separate us out from other things that people were doing in the city. Um, and we went on and won an award for it, so, um, you know, it, it obviously worked. I think the, the best thing about it was because of the size of the stage, we could do things we were never able to do before. So we didn't actually walk out, we rode out on bikes. Yeah. And coming out, coming out <laughs> this way, across the stage, and just like, people as far back as my eyes will focus, just screaming, I've never, 
I've never felt like that before or since. It was mad. Yeah. So uh, the actual experience itself was like, looking back was absolutely brilliant, but when it was happening, it was just like a spectacle to take in. And I was just like, I just need to do a, a, a job. Uh, but what a fun time to have, man. Like I, got, I did that big, Mexican wave across yeah. and I was like, yeah, this is going to be fine. We're going to be good. Brilliant. Yeah, I think, um, to be honest, a, a brand new arena um, getting behind us, I think it, it, that sort of set us off, really. Um, there's not there's not much more you can do as a local comedian in, in performing in big, air, big arenas, big venues, and this was a great start for us last year. I think this, like, the size of it was like, wow, this is quite amazing. This is going to be quite a big event. It's going to be really quite fun. Um, because of it obviously being um, a gift to us as well. It was like, yeah. this is amazing to be having our first opportunity to come here and be there, it was brilliant. When we saw Van Morrison play, I think it was fantastic and it was the, the right atmosphere, but brilliant acoustics, a building purpose built for sound and that showed on the opening night. Uh, it was a, it was such a great day. I I, I, rem I still remember it really clearly from from waking up to 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 going to, to sleep. And it was a long day. Um, it was a busy day, and um, I was kind of nervous and excited in equal measure. Really um, nervous for all the obvious reasons of opening a new venue. Um, excited. Um, that we would have, that we would at last see people in the building without hard hats, without yellow vests, and who were there to be to be entertained and listen to some great music. Um, so, so it was kind of equal measure, really. And, and I think one of the standout, there's loads of standout points for that day. But one for me was, um, I was showing someone to their seat on the side balcony, and I remember after they sat, I turned to leave and um, right in front of me was the main fixed central balcony and it was full, full of people ready to listen to Van Morrison. It was the first time that that area had been full of people and it was a strange feeling of, of kind of real excitement that, you know, this was the start of something really quite important for the city and for the venue. Um, and uh, almost alarming in a way because because we'd been so busy in prepping the building and and training all the staff and getting ourselves ready suddenly there was that punch of reality that this is it I mean it was mad really wasn't it we were sat eight o'clock in the morning Sean Paul and his entourage arrives it was the most showbiz moment of my life I didn't realize that that was Sean Paul that came in he came in first normally when a celebrity comes you meet the manager and someone else says hello where's he sitting what's he going can we get Sean just came in and shook her hand before I even realized it was him um yeah I won't forget that day it was amazing just sat next was in the studio having a glass of water had such a laugh and he was just game for everything. It was so fun. Yeah, we were wondering whether he was going to say yes to our ideas because we come up with some ideas to play games and stuff. And we thought he was going to be serious and say no to it all, but he was up for yeah. just having fun. So our favourite thing we did was we wanted to see if Sean Paul could understand the Hull accent, which is obviously quite strong. I'm sure he hasn't been around here too much. So we got one of our listeners, Sue, on the line to give him some proper classic Hull lines. And he did really well. Um, <laughs> to be fair to him, he did all right with them. He gave it a good go. And I think it was it because a lot of people go, we can't understand what Sean Paul's saying. Well, could <laughs> Sean Paul understand Sue? No, no, he couldn't. Can I have a white one and a cup for the bin? Wow. Please play that one more time. <laughs> Can I have a white one and a cup for the bin? What? Please, one more time. Last time. Can I have a white one and a cup for the bin? Can I have a white rag and a curb for the bin? <laughs> This is something you'd hear in the bar, right? If you wanted to do an order yeah. in the bar, yeah. this is what you'd ask for. Can I have a white wine and a Coke for the bin? A white wine. Got yes. it! Yes! And a Coke for the bin. A bin is a, a, a kid. what someone calls a kid. Yes. Oh, wow. A go. Coke for the bin. There you go. <laughs> so even a girl kid is called a bin? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a lingo, yeah. Right. right, can I have a white wine and a Coke for the bin? You are so down with this whole right. language, you've nailed it. <laughs> so, for a long time we've sort of moved our events around different venues and we've never quite settled on somewhere that was big enough for what we needed 
but also sort of felt like an event space. Um, so when the opportunity came to come here and to be the first dinner here, um, the capacity was a, a huge selling point for us. And, the service was brilliant, the whole night went really, really well. All right, so we're, we're really looking forward to the event in, in a few weeks' time, you know. We've got, got a major support act for the first time, um, all the usual fun and games of a Hull FC Player of the Year event, as well as being a you know, major, major venue within the city, so it should be a really, really good night. I mean, obviously, Pictures have started coming through. Whenever yeah, it was a surprise to us because we didn't know about it, did yeah. we? No, no, we were just getting random pictures thinking, what is this? And then we're seeing a full one of all the iconic places in Hull. And then there we are. Yeah, we're yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Just in the middle. Yeah, yeah, it's an honour and it's not something that I, you know, I'm still bragging about it to this day. In fact, when I was in here for Sean Paul, it's kind of like stood. I was like, yeah, do you want a picture of me and the, and the little bud sugar thing here? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's amazing. And like, you know, like I said earlier, it makes us feel like we've kind of done something, accomplished something. Yeah. It's one of them I've been looking at just before filming. And like, there's some things I grew up here with. Some, some, some of my musical heroes, some of my icons are on this wall. And where on the wall as well, it's, it's such a kind of honour to be part of that and you know it feels nice to be accepted in the culture of Hull because this is what this wall represents and it's nice to know that we're part of that. I decided I wanted to run a marathon before I was 40, which I'm 40 this year. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to run a marathon, I need to run it for something. So luckily, Cash for Kids is a fantastic cause that we're supporting at the arena. Um, and very close to my heart, being from the city and it helping support vulnerable children in the area. Cash for Kids, we're Viking FM's charity. Um, so we support sick, disabled and disadvantaged children in East Yorkshire and Northern Lincolnshire. Um, so all the money that we raise, um, stays locally helping the children are most in need in our communities. I think it's really important for local businesses to get involved with us. I think, you know, the children are our future, you know, especially the children in this area. We're in a high area of deprivation. You know, Kingston upon Hull is probably um, ranked 20, 22nd most deprived in the whole of the UK. So I think it's really, really important that local businesses invest um, in the future of the region, and that is the children that we look after. We've had an amazing response to the to the first 12 months and I think we've had 200,000 people either through the door or book tickets so far um, coming from all around the world. We've had people from America, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, Canada um, and then into mainland Europe as well and people, we're finding that people are coming from Belgium, they're hopping on the ferry and coming across. Um, so it's been a massive boost not just to us but also to the local hotels, to restaurants, to the shopping centres, to people parking their cars, they're filling their cars up with petrol. Um, I think there's been a, a great boost for the local economy. I mean, all amazing events in Hull, it's something the city's really good at, at making these huge events. But the Bonus Arena has kind of added that proper star quality. I mean, we're getting like the biggest stars from around the world here in Hull, and it almost feels like it's our private party. It's like everyone's in the Bonus Arena and you've seen Sean Paul and George Ezra and they're so close to you and everyone's having the best time. So it's like that added level of celeb and showbiz, I think. George Ezra, it was your proper sing-along moments, arm in arm with your mates, yeah. beer in hand. I mean, that was something special, wasn't it? And George Ezra, not just the songs, but the chat between the songs. I felt like I was in George Ezra's living room and he was just chatting through the last couple of years of his life with him. And he's like, shall I, shall I play a song now? Yeah. Um, for that, for the banter, I think he, George was brilliant. The show is going to be more, uh, we, we obviously had an out of town headliner this year. We don't have that this year. We want to. We want to push the talent to the forefront. Um, but we've gone with different acts because you know the festival isn't just the same acts that you saw that night. It's different acts. There's there's so many talent there, so many different backgrounds of comedy that we wanted to kind of showcase that and give everyone an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, you know, like everything else was like scaled up, more refined. You know, we're in control of the lighting when it when it comes in, when it goes out. We've got. Um, a couple of uh, guests who are going to come in and do some, some little bits. I'm really pleased, beyond pleased, with the success of the first year. We've had all sorts of events, 
live music, sport, conferences, exhibitions, meetings, everything that the venue was designed for, we have had here in this past 12 months. The future of the arena holds much of the same of what we've already had. So exceptionally talented local artists playing here, global stars coming to play here, some strong sports events, and our continuing programme of conference, exhibition and meetings. So we're literally going from strength to strength. We've had a great first 12 months and we've kind of built the, built the basis for a really strong future going forwards.